Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Suley Allison, brought to you by this massive book, over 700 pages, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, everything you need to know about training, nutrition, supplementation, and PED use, get that on Amazon.com, and then get my book while you're there, why not, Real Bodybuilding, what a great book. And now, all the way from Athens, Greece, look at all those books, Dr. George Suliatos, welcome sir, welcome. Hello, Ron. Have a nice week. Yeah, I like, and, I, I like your new off. I like the new backdrop. It looks really cool. Yeah, uh, I welcome you from my new room. You know, my this was my dad's office, and now I moved to this place for good. I live behind the other studio I was living, and uh, we can uh, proceed from here now. The next two hundred episodes. Yeah, yeah. So I want to start with uh, this guy. Might be your number one fan. I don't know. Check this out. Hey guys, I love the show. I had to binge watch the first 202 episodes. This guy watched two over 200 of episodes of this show, like in a few days, to get up to date. My question, apart from my gear cycle, I also take HCG Fragment HG176-191 and Melanotan 2, which are all subcutaneous, and I shoot them individually, which is a pain. Would it be all right to mix them all together in the same syringe? Thanks very much, Alex, from the United Kingdom. Well, I don't think so. I was using also 171, 1 into 1, along with G8. This is actually a fat-burning enhancement peptide. Hmm. And uh, plus, I was using HG. So in order to be sure nothing was um, wrongly mixed, I, I, was, I, I, I did three separate injection in my stomach, you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, somebody perhaps may mix them, but uh, even the, because they are water solid, but I want to be sure that there's nothing uh, wrongly done. So even now I'm using HCG and G8 in two, in two separate syringes every day. So, okay, you may go ahead, but uh, if I were you, no, I want to be... Um, I want to be sure I'm injecting each peptide itself. Right. So I would go each of one straight instead of mixing all together. Yeah, you know, it's because uh, for many years I've been using the same syringe for like, let's say right now I'm on, I'm using test and DECA from Frontline. So I draw out the test first, then I stick the same needle in the next bottle of DECA and I can never be sure if maybe all of that test got into the DECA or not. No problem with that. By the way, I do the same when I suck first the DECA. I know that in the test needle is going to be a little bit of natural. No problem with yeah. that. And you can mix yet um, oil based. But uh, when it comes to, to peptides, yeah. I want to use my daily dose because I'm injecting on a daily basis a pre-filled syringe. So I cannot put them all in one, all right? Because I'm using a daily microdose of each peptide. All right, so here you go, Alex. You gotta use different syringes, sorry. Next one, for someone who is natural and has a high PSA, can they start DIM, D-I-M, to reduce estrogen in order to keep testosterone high and achieve muscle gains maximizing? Now, PSA has to do with estrone, the E1, but estrogens that can proliferate the cancer cells of the prostatic gland. Hmm. Uh, as I said in the previous episode, it doesn't provide anti-estrogenic activity for the main estrogen, the estradiol, but it can has protective effects against the estrone that is elevating under cancer. Actually, women also that are using HRT and estrogens also take DIM to prevent the elevation of the E1 of estrone. Um, so um, when PSA now it's elevated under, let's say, normal circumstances, you have to be sure to clarify between something bad and something that elevates the PSA that could be normal, such as prostatitis. So if you take antibiotics, then the PSA would go down. Uh, using the bike extensively or um, the motorcycle, that because there is a force that presses the perineum where the prostatic gland is located. And then also ejaculation either from sex or um, intercourse or from masturbation then will elevate a little bit the PSA. So 
stay off from riding the bike and having sex for three days, and then make sure that the PSA is elevated. But even though in such case, uh, if it's below two under your 50s, it's fine. If it's below four under your 60s, it's also fine. And doesn't mean that the BPH is, is a bad scenario. There are also people that have BPH without even taking uh, testosterone. And this is a good scenario, has nothing to do with the malignancy of the prostatic cancer. Okay. Yeah, your, uh, your visuals there are a little blown up, but we can hear you just fine. Yeah, I don't know what's uh, going on. Sometimes I just put my hand on the camera, on the webcam, and it fixes itself like that. Yeah. Ooh, see if that works. But uh, meanwhile, let's get to some more questions. Would it be okay to use propionate for my TRT as opposed to a longer ester? I just love the feeling propionate gives and don't mind the higher frequency of injections. There you go. Would 50 milligrams every other day propionate injections be okay for TRT? Yes, actually propionate, it's the best uh, solution to inject, the best scenario to inject on a daily basis because it's the half-life. And also propionate releases more of the compound. It releases 80% unlike the 70% of the CPNA in the enanthate. So if you do, he said 50 milligrams every other. He was thinking 50 milligrams. That's every kind other. of a lot, you know. Oh. So do it on a daily basis or every other, but less. So 25. If you do 25 every day, you go 175. Yeah. Now, if you do 50, okay, every other, it's also 200 or 150. Yeah. But you have to know that you get more of the compound. So more is not better because the propane releases 80% and you assimilate more testosterone. Anyway, go for it or every other day or on a daily basis. Yeah, cool. Next one is, <laughs> I'm fortunate to have a doctor who is willing to prescribe what is best for my health. Could you please suggest which suspension oil I should use for subcutaneous injections at TRD, TRT doses? Here in the United States, cypionate is suspended in cottonseed oil and denanthate in sesame oil. I'm currently on 150 milligrams test in denanthate, split three times. Yeah, does, does the matter? Does the oil it's suspended in even, does it matter? I don't know, but some people are, you know, they have allergic reactions to certain oils. Mm -hmm. I think for standard, we use the castor oil in Greece or sesame oil, you know, it's also the castor oil. Sure, oh, wow. But, uh, you know, I never had any concern about this. Uh, besides the pharmaceutical grade, which is the suspension, yeah. uh, has perfectly well tolerated oils, you know. It's for human use, it's not underground stuff, as long as it's from pharmacy, of course. Yeah, I mean, I had a guy give me crap on Instagram about the testosterone I was using from Frontline. He said, that's in, I can't remember what kind of oil it was, but he was like, oh, that's crap. I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? I've had my blood work, my test. Some people just like to complain. I don't know. <laughs> but here we go. More, more prostate-related questions. I heard that DHT causes the prostate to grow, but older men have low testosterone. Basically, there's not that much testosterone to convert to DHT. So what else can cause prostate enlargement in men over 50? I think, I think it has to do with estrogens. Estrogens wow. can enlarge the, uh, the prostatic tissue. Okay, that's why we're talking about optimization of all the hormones. We need aromatase inhibitors in a, in a small dose to control also estrogens, and Mogetal agree with that, and her dog also agrees with that. Um, so we don't need to crash estrogens, of course, but we need to, um, to control and avoid excess of estrogens. So all the hormones, prolactin, estradiol, DHT, testosterone have to be optimized and balanced together. Uh, we get a lot of questions about grapefruit juice lately. Hi, Doc. I was curious about grapefruit juice. This juice blocks CYP3A4 cytochrome. Any good applications with oral steroids and Viagra? Hmm. Now, I don't understand this kind of question. So oh. he said that the, the grape juice lowers the hematocrit. This was referring to all questions, but... What's the question about the relation this with what? Yeah, let's skip it because I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, good. sir. If we don't understand you, we can't really uh, answer the question. Uh, another propionate question. Wow. I have a bunch of test propionate I need to use. Is Monday, Wednesday, Friday frequent enough to inject? I can't keep track of every other day. 
yeah, as we said before, it's good every other day of propionate yeah. and it fits perfectly well to the half-life of the compound. Yeah. Much better than the enothate or the cpionate. So propionate actually it's 48 hours half-life. Yeah. So if you shoot it, if you inject it on a Friday and not again until Monday, now you're into uh let's see, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, that's 72 hours. So you probably you're, you're, I would imagine the trough, you're, you've lost a lot of blood concentration to test at that point. Yeah, okay, in a way you can say that. But within a cycle, we use usually during the cutting phase three times a week the propionate. Hmm. But we have so much testosterone in the blood hmm. that it gets a little percentage of it, you know, it goes down the trough levels. Yeah. And then it spikes again. So I, I think it's minority report. Come on. Okay. Now, if you use propionate, let's say, twice a week, twice a week, or once a week, then it should have an issue, yeah. Okay. Hey, guys, question. Is using a low dose of statin for life dangerous? I'm on 10 milligrams of rosuvostatin every other day to mitigate the side effects from HRT. I keep reading all these studies that statins are so dangerous. They increase the risk of diabetes and Alzheimer's. They decrease bone density. They damage the liver, give muscle pain, joint pain, and so on. My LDL was 120, HDL 38. I'm on 250 milligrams sustenon per week with 750 IU HCG, 50 milligrams proviron, and 50 milligrams DHEA. Wow. I also take fish oil for my LDL, but it seems to drop very slow. Before taking a statin, my LDL was 189. What do you think? Are statins that toxic? Could I replace them with supplements like bergamot or red, red yeast rice? Yeah, this guy is uh, using 250. Yeah. This guy, this guy, obviously, he's using much more. Let's say he has to use 200 milligrams. That lowers the HDL if you use above 200. But what, we, what should we notice is that before the starting use, his LDL was 180. That means he, he's genetically predisposed to uh, dyslipidemia. Therefore, there's no side effects of, of the TRT, but he's genetically predisposed to elevated cholesterol. So he can use the most friendly statin, which is the robustatin, 10 milligrams in the States, five milligrams in Greece, in Europe perhaps, uh, that makes sure it lowers your total and uh, total cholesterol in the LDL. But this is not something has to do with, uh, with the social replacement therapy. Actually, TRT lowers LDL because it burns the visceral fat. So this guy is another, is an exemption because he carries the family history from his folks. Uh, you can nevertheless use some alternative supplements along with statins like red rice yeast, polycosinol, bergamot, um, niacin, phytosterols, and resveratrol. And of course, consume uh, unsaturated fatty acids, Mediterranean diet coming from avocado, uh, olive oil, walnuts, sardines, or salmon. Skip the fried foods, the trans fat, and the refined sugars. And you can go closely to 100, which is the perfect for the LDL, okay? And break the 200 barrier of the total cholesterol um, limit. That's all. So minimize your total testosterone and then add the five milligram starting and plus this supplementation plus the diet. And Actually, you have to get married with this stuff because you have the bad genes from your parents. So I'm just curious, all these dangerous side effects of uh, statins, are they dose dependent? So if you're yes, on... at least, yeah. yeah, so you can take the five milligram. Now, the most common that uh, deals with athletes is the overtraining and their abdomyolysis. So uh, let's say don't go for a bloody leg workout when you are sore and you have not recovered because you induce then the rhabdomyolysis. And uh, do not take also any anabolic steroids while on statins, okay? okay? Um, also, now they say it elevates the liver enzymes, yes. That's why we don't overtrain. And that's why we don't take other steroids. We don't drink alcohol. We don't take painkillers. They also say that statins elevate the insulin resistance. So you can use berberin, chromium picolinate, vanadyl sulfate, plenty of fiber, skip the sugars, and also some metformin. 
to avoid the A1C elevation. And if you use also G8 while on statins, you must use metformin to avoid the insulin resistance. And I would rather take the fat burning from the GH rather than the mTOR kick, which is the edge of one release and the, and the muscle growth, because I don't want to become diabetic type two, and I prefer to stay lean with GH rather than getting bigger with insulin resistance. Okay? While on starting, of course, that elevates the A1C. But every, every medication has the consequences, even aspirin, steroids, any kind, cortisone. So we cannot find the holy grail of medicine that is side effect free. George, in Greece, on television, do they have advertisements for pharmaceutical drugs like we do in the US? No, and I was really um, impressed by uh, what they say. I mean, when I was in, in New York, I was watching the broadcast. They spoke about insulin resistance if A1C goes up. We don't have this kind of education, you know, here in the, there are certain, of course, shows in, in, the, in the, not the public TV, but in the private TV, you know, yeah. that they're gonna speak about this with uh, physicians, but not as advertising, you know? Mm. And uh, I like the fact that the American audience get, is getting, you know, informed about this and acknowledges the, the, the basic stuff because, yeah, I believe half of the U.S. population is overweight, at least. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, the, the reason I brought it up is because on the commercials that we have, half, at least half of the commercial is somebody talking about, they'll show somebody playing in a field or, you know, having fun with their kids or their dog when they go, a breva may cause depression, uh, suicidal thoughts, intestinal bleeding. You know, they, it goes on and on. It's always every, every drug that they're selling you, they have to legally tell you all the side effects, but they yeah. do it in such a... It's, it's hilarious. Way, yeah. <laughs> it's like a little, a little, a little funny narration. Well, they, they, they disclaim here about the supplements. In two seconds, everything, all the side effects. Yeah. Okay. You read that quick. Mm. All right. Uh, this is a good one. It's the mailman from Tennessee, Doctor T. You said you were giving your grandmother some Deca, your late grandmother. My father is seventy-eight. He has cancer in the lung and on his adrenal gland. He had prostate cancer and chemo two years ago. He had chemo last year that shrunk the lung cancer. He fell the 1st of February, cause of weakness, broke his hip. Not real bad, though. He's struggling with strength. Do you think dad could benefit from DECA or testosterone to at least help with strength so he's able, more able to get up and stand? He's not going to any treatments anymore, like physical therapy, I guess. So he has he skipped the prostate cancer. He's cancer-free no. now from the prostate. If so, what does he have cancer now? 78 is cancer in the lung right now and on his adrenal gland. So he beat, yeah, he already beat prostate cancer two years ago. So in such case, I would say this is a green light to go ahead with uh, testosterone and, and antrolone because um, if it was already the prostate cancer in uh, was proceeding, you know, uh, there could be a red flag about testosterone, even though Morgetale doesn't... Um, approve that and also supplies testosterone within prostate cancer with other agents like the testosterone and anastasol and DIM. Mm. But uh, I believe so for a brief period of time with enhanced physical therapy and a protein diet, he can try, let's say 0.5 ml of both compounds once a week for six to eight weeks, daily supplementation along with daily resistance physical therapy to see how it goes, you know, at least to stand to get out of the bed and go use the restroom. I mean, 78 is not that old. Really. No, of course not. Yeah. Your grandmother was 102? She, she was 106. Yeah. Wow. 106. I think the world, I think the oldest person in the world right now is like only 112. Something like that. So I mean, in Greece, we have a couple of people. I mean, uh, a dozen of people who are over 100. Yeah. And strangely, they are they are not rich people, wealthy, you know. They are yeah. average people, you know, with with the basic stuff, you know, basic food to eat. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Huh? So uh, let's say the the late Queen Elizabeth, she was a billionaire, and she didn't make to a hundred. You know, crazy. True. I mean, so doesn't mean the money will buy you the longevity and the the, the eternity, unless you could take your brain and put it into a young body, huh? That'll work. 
<laughs> we'll be able to do that eventually. I promise you. Hello, guys. I'm. This is this is crazy. I'm curious if you ever heard of people getting a seizure from gear usage. I suffered one recently. I'm curious if gear can even cause that. Not taking HGH, insulin, or any thyroid medications. Blood sugar was 98.3 at the time, and blood pressure was 122 over to 72. Urine and blood tests were all good. Doctors can can't seem to place what caused it. I believe you have to be examined by a neurologist and psychiatrist mm -hmm. and do an extensive MRI, brain MRI, to see if you have epilepsy. Epilepsy, wow. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if gear caused seizures, a lot of people I know would be having seizures all these years, and I've never heard anybody say they had a seizure. So, grasping at straws, but good luck, sir, good luck. Can I stay on 500 milligrams of testosterone forever? I'm 39 years old and I'm on TRT, 250 sustenone per week. And I was wondering if I do my blood tests regularly and mitigate the side effects with other PEDs and supplements, can I stay on 500 milligrams of tests forever? If not, what's the stay highest dose? Gram is a lot, yeah. yeah. So a quarter of a gram, and even this is also more, because as we said before, in the long run, you're going to have, you need to control the estrogens, and this is a polypharmacy that will affect also the HDL. Uh, you need to control the erythrocytosis. Um, I don't know about acne or health thinning and prostatic enlargement. This is optional. Um, and also overdo, overusing testosterone will lower your HDL. That needs to be over 40. So you need to compensate with more cardio. And also mind your blood pressure, which is a silent killer, as Thomas says also. So no, I think half a gram is a lot, man. Even a quarter, but uh, you can adjust between 200 to 150 milligrams, but certainly not, not for life, half a gram. Come on. Did Milos, it was I, like this. Everybody would stay in such a dose. I don't want to misquote him, but I think, didn't Milo Sarshev say he's been on 500 Milos milligrams? Used half a gram, yeah, but... Uh, like 40 years, 30 years. 30 well, years. There was, when, I met, when I met him in 2016, he told me when he... Just got when he got out of jail, he was downsized and he would restart again. Mm -hmm. um, and also, he was much bigger uh, in 2020 Arnold Classic and Mr. Olivia 2019 with the Milos that I saw later. I don't know what he's taking. I've, I've heard also heard that he's taking half a gram. Yeah. But uh, at 55, he's, you know, of course, he has a remarkable shape. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if he stays all the way at 500 milligrams, you know? Yeah. So I, I didn't want to misquote him, but I thought I heard some, I, I hear too, people yes. saying that he stays but I don't know how it. steady is this, you know? How how long does he cruise with this? Maybe all the time. Let's see. And our final question. Hey, Doc, I'm 36 years old with low thyroid. I use 100 micrograms T4 and 25 micrograms T3 and hypogonadism. A while ago, my endocrinologist said that my IGF-1 is on the level of a 50-year-old, but for some reason, she doesn't want to give me a prescription for Macassamine pharmaceutical IGF-1. Wow, I didn't know they had that. So my question is, is there an anabolic androgenic steroid that increases the IGF-1 levels, effect, IGF levels effectively? So actually, testosterone levels IGF-1, but within the between half range, and upper range, you know, you know, so the upper scale of the mid range. Yeah. Uh, but you don't exceed the IGF-1. Uh, but for, let's say, IGF-1 deficiency, if it's down, you don't get prescribed the IGF-1, but you get prescribed the secreted dogs in the fragments, the IGH, RH, the growth hormone, releasing hormone, okay, like sermorelin, GHRP6, um, MK677, right, the boost, the adenohypophysis, the frontal lobe, to release more of the G8, but within natural levels, and it, levels, I think, that do not exceed the age of one upper limb. So it's safer, cheaper, of course, less productive. Um, and these are also ghrelin agonists that uh, increase a lot of the appetite. Um, I stick mm -hmm. with this because we don't have this kind of option in, in Europe. And the private clinics in the States can give you, can provide you this um, growth hormone enhancements. Otherwise, <laughs> go yourself and buy the 
super expensive G8s. GH, GH elevator IGF-1, correct? Yes, but under a higher dose. Uh -huh. Under higher dose. If you want to exceed the IGF-1 upper range, you need to abuse the, the, the growth hormone, okay? Like how much? Well, I would say over five, six. Okay. All right. Yeah. Pharma grade, yeah. Well, now we're talking big bucks. Big bucks, and then uh, yeah. there comes the side effects also, right? Yeah, I mean... Six, six, six. I use a pharma GH every day is going to set you back, guys. Real. Well, 36 I, 36 I use a pharma grade cost uh, $200 in Greece. Yeah, for the, the Some people are using, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, in pen. So let's mm -hmm. say you use this within a week, five units every day, five, seven, 35. So we, it's, it's uh, $800 for a month for just GH. Come on, give me a break. This is overkill. Unless, unless you're, you're not a TV pro. Unless you're the liver king. Yeah, he was using like 15 or 20. And imagine or that this is a casual dose. Some people are using 16 or 20. Ooh, I don't think most of those people are paying for their growth hormone. I think someone's giving it to them. Like, you know, if you're over in Dubai or Kuwait, you're probably not paying for your drugs. Somebody, Somebody's buying all your drugs for you. Anyway, that's all we have for this week. Uh, everybody, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Like this video if you like it. Hit that thumbs up thing. Share the video on your social media, please. And of course, turn on your notifications so you know when we have all kinds of great content. We uh, have so much stuff on this channel we'd love for you to check out. And if you have questions for Doctor for next time, please leave them in the comments below. We will get to them on next week's show. We're very, very lucky to have Dr. George Julianos every week here sharing his experience, information, wisdom from many, many years of training. And one of the few medical doctors on this planet who is able to answer these questions for you. So... We're very lucky, sir. We, we appreciate it very much. And I love this new office. i got to say it one more time. All right, guys, thanks for watching Ask Dr. Testosterone. We'll see you right here next time. Yeah, bye. Hey, did you like that video? Smash that like button, subscribe to MD, and please comment down below. Thanks for watching.